Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about the neuromuscular junction. Now as you can see in the diagram, this is a neuromuscular junction. Okay, in which the structure mainly contains the, uh, the nerve endings, which is in the intimate contact with the muscle fiber, as you can see. Now the characteristics of the structure of the NM junction are first of all the terminal button or the end feet. Now they are actually uh, the axon of the neuron supplying a skeletal muscle losses its myelin sheet at its terminal end. As you can see, this is the terminal ending of the uh, uh, neuron or the nerve cell. And over here, there is absence of the myelin sheet. Okay, and it divides into many synaptic knobs or the terminal button or the end feet. Now, these synaptic knobs or terminal button actually have around three leg vesicles into the, into it. As you can see, these are the vesicles have around three leg vesicles which actually contains acetylcholine and the mitochondria. Okay, and the acetylcholine in the terminal button is actually formed by the mitochondria only. Okay, now next is the presynaptic membrane. Now this membrane uh, actually is nothing but the uh, nerve, uh, this nerve membrane. This is the presynaptic membrane. This refers to the axonal membrane only lying the terminal button of the nerve endings. Right, this is the uh, only the axonal membrane only. Now next is synaptic cleft. It is actually 50 to 100 nanometer wide space between the presynaptic membrane and the postsynaptic membrane, right? And it is filled by the, remember, extracellular fluid with reticular fibers forming the matrix, okay, containing ECF. Now, the postsynaptic membrane, it is the sarcolemma or the muscle membrane, right? It forms the postsynaptic membrane and the muscle membrane in this region is thickened actually okay in this region as you can see this region is comparatively thicker than the rest okay and this thickened portion okay of the post synaptic membrane is known as the synaptic trough synaptic trough okay and this uh, layer is also known as the motor end plate remember this is a synaptic trough which is comparatively thicker and also known as a motor end plate now at this synaptic trough only the uh, synaptic knobs or the terminal button actually fits into the muscle fibers right and forms an nm junction now furthermore the postsynaptic membrane as you can see is thrown into uh, various of the large number of folds as you can see these are the folds and these folds are actually known as the subneural cleft or the palisades subneural cleft or the palisades these are very important so remember three main terms in this this is the synaptic trough which is a thickened portion of the muscle fiber where the nerve ending actually fits into this and uh, actually from the nm junction then the motor end plate, the other name of the synaptic trough, and the palisades or the subneural cleft. These are the subneural cleft for the folds or the thrown folds of the uh, this synaptic trough. Okay, and these increase the surface area of the muscle fiber. And now the postsynaptic membrane, this one is actually having various of the receptor sites known as the uh, nicotinic receptor for the acetylcholine. Right, and they are mainly present near this junctional folds or the palisades. Okay, so these are the uh, receptor cell or the nicotinic receptor. And remember, in this junctional folds or the palisades or the subneural cleft, there are the acetylcholine esterase. These are the acetylcholine esterase enzyme which will actually degrade the acetylcholine coming from the uh, this terminal buttons. Right, so remember three main things: terminal button, presynaptic membrane, and the postsynaptic membrane. And between these two, uh, synaptic cleft having the ECF. Now, how the impulse is transmitted from the neuron to the muscle? Now, uh, remember that the skeletal muscle is stimulated only through its nerve. And the neuromuscular junction transmits the impulses from the nerve to the muscle. Now, these five events actually sequently occurs for the transmission of the impulses from the neuron to the muscle. Right? First of all, it is the release of the acetylcholine by the nerve endings. And the effect of the acetylcholine that is released by this nerve endings on the postsynaptic membrane. Then because, because of the effect, the development of end plate potential occurs, miniature end plate potential and finally the removal of the acetylcholine by the acetylcholine esterase enzyme or the choline esterase enzyme. Now we will discuss about all these five events sequently in detail. Now first of all release of the acetylcholine by the nerve terminals. Now this is the nerve terminal. Now, uh, for, now as you can see I told you before that the acetylcholine and the mitochondria actually present in the vesicles or the vesicles of the uh, this terminal buttons right 
now uh, we have to open or cause the exocytosis of this vesicle to remove or to release the uh, acetylcholine into the matrix or into the ecf right and for this what we have to do we have to do the exocytosis and this exocytosis is, is mainly caused by the uh, increased level of calcium uh, inside the uh, this nerve terminal so what happens is that when nerve impulse actually reaches uh, at, at the nerve terminals so what happens is the voltage gated calcium channels as you can see over here this voltage gated calcium channels actually opens and so the calcium in the extracellular fluid enters from the cleft synaptic cleft into a terminal buttons now as because of the increase in the calcium ions inside the nerve terminals this will cause triggering of the exocytosis of the vesicles and the vesicles cause uh, exocytosis and because of that the ACS is actually released in the synaptic cleft now the released uh, ACH in the or the acetylcholine in the uh, this synaptic cleft mainly causes effect on the post synaptic membrane now what happens is uh, the acetylcholine so release actually diffuses in the synaptic cleft and binds to the nicotinic receptor only before that the uh, near junctional folds in the, in the post synaptic membrane there are some of the uh, this nicotinic receptors for the acetylcholine located in the junctional fold of the motor end plate okay so, so they will bind to that particular receptor or the ACH receptor development of the end plate potential now because of the uh, binding of the acetylcholine to the acetylcholine receptor so this causes opening of the large amount of the acetylcholine gated channels and because of the opening of this large amount of the sodium ions from the ECF okay will enter inside the muscle fiber now uh, if you know that the RMP or the resting moment potential of the muscle fiber is around minus 80 to minus 90 okay but because of the entering of the large amount of the positive charge or the sodium ions inside the muscle fiber this will cause change in the RMP value of the muscle fiber and as because of this it causes depolarization of the muscle fiber or the post synaptic membrane and this change or this local positive potential change inside the muscle fiber is known as the end plate potential local positive potential change is known as the end plate potential okay now the end plate potential is non propagative remember epp is non propagative okay but for uh, the muscle contraction propagation of the impulses is required right so what happens is uh, that the uh, RMP value is minus 80 to minus 90 okay and the threshold or the critical value for the propagation of this impulse is minus 60 so what happens but when critical value of minus 60 of the depolarization actually reaches so uh, the impulse will propagate okay and the end plate potential triggers the development of the action potential in the muscle fiber so remember the threshold value for the propagation of this uh, impulse is actually uh, minus 60 okay up till minus 60 from minus to minus 60 there will be no movement or no propagation of the impulses right but after minus 60 okay the propagation actually occurs as a positive as the charge actually goes positive so propagation occurs and as because of this uh, the action potential generated on either side of the end plate, end plate and conducted away from the end plate in both the direction along the muscle fiber thus causing the muscle contraction so for the EPP to propagate it should be at least minus 60 for the development of the AP or the action potential propagation of the impulses in the muscle fiber from the nerves. Now next is the miniature end plate potential. Now uh, this end plate potential was actually developed when the muscle actually needs contraction okay and the impulses are generated right but what over here is even at the rest not in the movement but even at the rest small amount of acetylcholine is actually released from the presynaptic membrane which actually causes a weak end plate potential of 1.5 millivolt and the production or the formation of the 0.5 millivolt end plate potential which doesn't cause any kind of contraction okay but this is formed right because of the small amount of release of the ACH from the presynaptic membrane okay this is known as the miniature end plate potential this doesn't cause any kind of contraction remember and the removal of the acetylcholine by the acetylcholine esterase now what happens is the acetylcholine in the cleft remain for for a very shorter period of time for about one millisecond only and then it is released from the uh, cleft or synaptic cleft by mainly two ways either the acetylcholine is actually destroyed by the enzyme named choline esterase which i told you before that is present over here okay in the palisades or the junctional folds 
or some new will cleft right so it is actually present over there and causes the destruction of the acetylcholine right or we can say a small amount of the acetylcholine diffuses out of the synaptic space and is no longer used for the muscle contraction purpose so by the two ways the acs is actually destroyed either by the acetylcholine esterase enzyme or small amount of acs diffuses out of the synaptic space and no longer used now uh, it is very important to know that the rapid removal of the acetylcholine from the cleft is very important because this rapid removal of the cleft of the acetylcholine from the cleft prevents the repeated excitation of the muscle fiber now drugs affecting the neuromuscular junction now the neuromuscular junction actually affected by mainly the blockers or the nm junction blockers and the stimulators or the neuromuscular junction stimulators now in the blockers they mainly include the curare or the tubocurare these are mainly the competitive inhibitors of the acetylcholine and the competition with the acetylcholine for binding with the acetylcholine receptor the nicotinic receptor on the postsynaptic membrane now if the amount of tubocurare in the body is more as compared to the acetylcholine so this drug will actually attach or binds with the acetylcholine receptor and will, and, uh, will inhibit the formation of the production development of the end plate potential and thus uh, the impulse is not transmitted now the bungar toxin now these are the uh, mainly uh, released or the toxic substance released from the deadly snakes or the venom of the deadly snakes and they actually blocks the nm junction or they actually blocks that impulse transmission by binding with the uh, receptors on the post synaptic membrane now the succinylcholine and the carbamylcholine now this drug actually act like the acetylcholine only and cause depolarization of the postsynaptic membrane now but as these drugs are not destroyed by the choline esterase enzyme and so the muscle remains in the depolarized state only for a long period of time now thus they block the myoneural junction by keeping the muscle in the depolarized state now next is the botulinum toxin they may derive from the clostridium botulinum named bacteria okay and they are mainly block the transmission across the uh, muscle and the neuron junction by preventing the release of the acetylcholine from the terminal button of the nerve ending so it mainly inhibits only the uh, release of the acetylcholine from the terminal button of the nerve endings remember okay and these two actually blocks actually binds with the receptors this actually acts like the ac and causes depolarization and so as because they are not destroyed the muscle actually remains in a depolarized state and the and the myoneural junction or the muscle uh, and the neuron junction is blocked by keeping the muscle in depolarized state and over here the release of the acs is only not done by the uh, presynaptic membrane now the neuromuscular stimulators now in order to continuously stimulate the neuromuscular junction uh, they are mainly the drugs over here actually act like two ways either they will act like ACH or either the drugs will actually inactivate the choline esterase so that the ACH is not destroyed right now first of all the ACH or the acetylcholine like action drugs they are the carbacol and the nicotine now these drugs are not are either not destroyed or is destroyed very slowly by the enzyme enzyme choline esterase now as because these two uh, acetylcholine like action drugs are not destroyed by the enzymes so as because they cause repeated stimulation and continuous action of muscle causing the muscle spasm right now next are the drugs that inactivate the choline esterase enzyme so that the uh, destruction of the ACS doesn't occur now these are mainly neostigmine and the physostigmine now these two drugs actually stimulate the neuromuscular junction by inactivating the enzyme acetylcholine esterase so the neuromuscular blockers and the neuromuscular stimulator actually affects either by blocking or stimulating more the nm junction now very important the disorder of the neuromuscular junction and that is the myasthenia gravis now what happens in the myasthenia gravis is that it it actually autoimmune disease in which the antibody actually produced against the nicotinic receptors now as because the antibodies are actually produced against the nicotinic receptors which are actually present on the postsynaptic membrane uh, they will cause the destruction of the particular receptor and as because of this whatever amount of acs was released from the presynaptic membrane into the cleft won't be get bind to the uh, nicotinic receptor on the postsynaptic membrane right now as because of the destruction of the 
nicotinic receptor on the postsynaptic membrane whatever amount of the ACH or the acetylcholine that is produced in the presynaptic membrane won't be able to get bind to the particular receptors and so the end plate potential is not produced and as because of this the paralysis of the muscle occurs because the transmission of the impulse from the nerve to the muscle is not done and as because of this the muscle won't get any kind of impulse and they will act like paralyzed right and if this uh, myasthenia gravis is, is intense okay it may cause respiratory muscle paralysis and the person will ultimately die because of the lack of oxygen in the body now mainly the characteristics of this are the smoothing of the smoothing of the forehead there won't be any kind of lines on the forehead eyebrow and the eyes droop downwards and the drooping of the corner of the mouth these are some of the characteristic of the myasthenia gravis on the face so this was all about the neuromuscular junction and its disease hope you understood it well thank you so much